The air within the dimly lit office of Vincent Harrow was thick with melancholy, each particle carrying the whispers of past tragedies and the taste of unsweet coffee. Harrow, cradling his weathered features with a contemplative hand, shifted his gaze toward the stack of parched envelopes on his mahogany desk, each one a new world of enigma and potential despair. The muted chirping of a wayward cricket from the back alley pervaded the otherwise hushed silence of the room, a lonely serenade to the gathering dusk. Unsealing the first letter with care, he began to read. The neat, hurried scribbles told tales of odd disappearances and strange encounters in the dark veins of Bowling Green, its labyrinthine sewers. The town of Bowling Green was, by itself, a quaint relic of the past, a calm facade that belied the pulsating undercurrent of the bazaar that the letters hinted at. Harrow traced his past through his mind's eye, remembering his own terrors, a different kind of labyrinth from which he had emerged, scarred yet resolute, his past echoed the psychic suffering of those trapped in the twisted depths of the city's underground, engendering in him a strange kinship with their plight. The specter of his loved one's face, forever etched into the recesses of his memory, flickered in the shadows, a silent motivator urging him to dare the unknown. Every soul deserves a voice, no matter how lost, he murmured, the words lacing the air with resolve. His office walls, laden with unresolved case files and faded photographs, stood as silent spectators to his oath. With that, he penned down his acknowledgement to the distressed citizen of Bowling Green, his hands steady, his heart anchored by duty and compassion. As he pressed the stamp on the envelope, he felt a prickle of unease, an intangible sensation crawling up his spine that this was no ordinary case. He frowned at the unsettling tickle of foreboding, dismissing it as a trick of his weary mind. The final line of the letter bore down on him, its weight far exceeding the ink it was written with. The sewers, they sing an ancient song, Mr. Harrow, a melody of secrets best left forgotten. A deep breath filled his lungs, the cold air carrying with it the familiar scent of old paper and responsibility. As he prepared to leave his sanctuary, a sense of determination solidified within him each step towards the door resonating like a solemn drumbeat announcing the beginning of a journey. Underneath the twilight sky, the facade of Bowling Green was still, its darkened corners veiling the mystery that lurked beneath. Its winding paths beckoned. The unexplored labyrinth of the sewers echoed ominously, promising darkness, danger, and a possible dance with insanity. His investigation had begun, a voyage into the heart of the dark city, its shadows ready to unfold their clandestine tales before his undaunted eyes. His past would be his anchor, his empathy the guiding light, and his love the silent hymn driving him deeper into the belly of the concrete leviathan that awaited his descent. Underneath Bowling Green's placid exterior, its network of sewers like the entrails of some long-dead concrete beast sprawled out into unseen corners, whispering tales that no human ear had heard. As Harrow descended into its stony innards, his flashlight cut through the darkness, unearthing an ancient narrative etched onto the rough walls. He trailed his gloved fingers over alien symbols, his brow furrowed as he attempted to unravel their cryptic dialect. The graffiti danced, grotesque and bizarre, around the perimeter of the tunnel, each form darker and more bewildering than the next. Despite their grotesquery, he could not ignore a strange harmony within their dissonant shapes, as if they were words in a symphony that was meant for the cosmos rather than the human tongue. As he ventured further, the marriage of new and old became apparent. The modern sewer system, all metal and rigidity, was intertwined with crumbling ruins, their stones whispering of a forgotten age. It was as if the pulse of the present beat in sync with the silent heart of the past. A sudden shift in the air was his only warning before the onset of his first vision. Reality fractured, shattering like glass, replaced by nightmarish scenes of twisted realities and monstrous entities. His eyes, wide with terror, bore witness to specters of ancient, inhuman figures, their elongated shadows seeming to sway to a silent rhythm. He felt his consciousness teetering on the precipice of sanity, every nerve screaming in rebellion against the surreal horror unfurling before him. As swiftly as it began, the terrifying spectacle subsided, 
leaving him gasping in the cold dampness of the sewer, his trembling hands clutching his now extinguished flashlight. The eerie quiet of the underground felt oppressive in the aftermath of his hallucinatory chaos, its weight pressing upon him like the depth of the earth overhead. Is this madness? He muttered, the words echoing back at him, a distorted reflection of his fear. But amid the fear, a core of resolve solidified. He would not crumble under this newfound horror. Not while his loved one's image still stood, a beacon in his rattled mind, their safety of paramount importance. As the echoes of his words died down, swallowed by the darkness, he reignited his torch. Its glow, dimmer now, was swallowed up by the looming darkness that surrounded him. Yet it bore testament to his resolute spirit. His path was laid out before him, winding deeper into the abyss. With a deep, steadying breath, he journeyed onward, each echoing footstep a testament to his tenacity. The ominous echoes of his visions whispered at the edge of his consciousness, a haunting melody that would follow him as he ventured deeper into the blackened veins of the cosmos. The narrow beams of Harrow's flashlight fell upon a trove of documents hidden amidst the rubble, their ancient ink whispering cryptic chronicles. As he pored over the faded words, they conjured tales of long-forgotten gods and eldritch rituals, their implications as chilling as the cold, damp stones he sat upon. Each parchment he turned was like peeling back the layers of a festering wound, the ghastly truth of Bowling Green's roots seeping out into the lantern-lit darkness. The descriptions of the cosmic entity in the text bore an uncanny resemblance to the monstrosities that haunted his visions. The realization struck him with a paralyzing fear. He was not delving into madness, but the remnants of an alien reality woven into the fabric of his seemingly mundane world. Simultaneously, the specter of his visions began to sharpen. Images of twisted realities bled into his waking world, their edges blurring the boundary of dream and reality. There was an unsettling familiarity in the otherworldly song they sang, a rhythm his soul seemed to remember from a time before his consciousness. The visions morphed from being an intruder to an integral part of his existence, as inseparable as his own shadow. His dreams were now haunted by a loved one ensnared in a puppet dance of cosmic horror. Night after night, he would witness their cries drowned out by the cacophony of the alien world their pleading eyes reflecting monstrous, formless shapes. It was a chilling tableau of terror, the strings of their fate being manipulated by unseen hands. He felt the chilling grip of desperation clutching his heart as he realized the looming threat wasn't merely ancient history. It was a living, breathing, pulsating terror that sought to devour all he held dear. The discovery was a weight upon his shoulders, a stone monument to the despair that gnawed at his insides. The once stalwart private investigator now found himself an unwilling participant in a play of shadows, his every action guided by an unseen script written in the blackened veins of the cosmos. Yet he did not falter. The visage of his loved one, suspended in the realm of the nightmares, fueled his resolve. He gathered the decaying manuscripts, each a piece of the terrifying puzzle he needed to solve. As he ventured deeper into the abyss, he carried with him a burden heavier than any he had borne before. He was standing at the precipice of the unknown, the ominous hum of the city above now drowned out by the ethereal melody of his waking nightmares. His path, once a simple journey into the sewers of a forgotten town, now led into the depths of cosmic horror, towards an end he could scarcely comprehend. His next steps were to embrace the inevitable, to tread the path of his forebears, into the endless echo of the silent scream. In the Stygian depths of Bowling Green's underworld, where shadows danced with the ghosts of forgotten tales, Harrow faced the irrevocable truth. From the blood-soaked earth, the whispers of his lineage slithered into his consciousness. An ancestral symphony sung in the language of cosmic dread. His past, he learned, was entwined with the worshippers of the ancient entity, their blood coursing through his veins was the very same ichor that had once inked eldritch oaths to the god beneath the city. A sense of bone-deep dread threatened to pull him under, the cosmic tides of his lineage pushing against his will. Yet even as his soul trembled on the brink of despair, an image steadied him, his loved ones, 
their faces a beacon of hope amid the cosmic abyss that yawned around him. His heart clenched around the specter of their imperiled existence, the ticking clock of their fate echoing in his ears louder than any cosmic hymn. The ancient ritual detailed in the decaying documents felt like a path drawn in blood and shadow. The thought of invoking the dark power, of becoming a vessel for its alien will, chilled him to the marrow. Yet when he looked into the abyss and saw the flickering image of his loved ones tethered amidst the cosmic chaos, he knew what he must do. With an almost reverent determination, he initiated the arcane ceremony. The stench of fear was swallowed by the swirling energies around him as he became the epicenter of a reality-bending maelstrom. The shadows around him swirled, seething and writhing like living things, whispering the song of the cosmos into his very being. In the heart of the storm, he felt the veil between himself and the entity thin. He experienced a vastness beyond comprehension, a state of existence beyond the bounds of mortal understanding. It was a realm of formless shapes, of colors unseen by human eyes, and of sounds that no earthly ear had heard. And then, silence. The world came rushing back. He stood alone amidst the darkened ruins, his torch now merely a dim star in the ocean of the abyss. The entity, once an alien terror, was now a part of him, a whispering voice in the back of his mind. He was the conduit, the bridge between the ancient god and the unsuspecting city above. As he navigated his way back to the surface, a certain calmness washed over him. The nightmares that had haunted his visions were now a part of his existence, a silent passenger in his consciousness. He emerged from the bowels of the concrete Leviathan, forever changed, the quiet dawn oblivious of the transformation that had occurred beneath. His gaze set upon the sunlit horizon his once mortal eyes now touched with an inhuman glow. The fate of Bowling Green and his loved ones was now intertwined with his own fate. His final thought, before turning to face the town, was of the loved ones he hoped to save. Would they recognize him, this man who was no longer just a man, but something else? The thought echoed in the silence of his mind, a solitary ripple in the vast cosmic ocean that he was now a part of. He stepped into the embrace of the quiet morning, an unwitting savior, the last line of defense between his world and the cosmic horror that now pulsed within him. We appreciate you tuning in. If you fancied the content, show your support with a like and subscribe. Hit the bell to keep up with our eerie adventures. Eldritch Tales Factory has plenty more to offer. Until next time.